So, honey, you ready to do a movie review? Movie review. Movie review. Better Off Dead is a 1985 teen comedy starring John Cusack as Lane Meyer. Lane Meyer is this teenage boy who is deeply in love with his girlfriend Beth. And then she cuts him off. Yeah. She breaks it up. Okay. And things don't go very well for Lane he Meyer. Doesn't re he doesn't take that information very well. Not very well at and all. And he, he does what he thinks is the only route for him to take and that's to, to try to commit suicide. And you think, like, this sounds depressing, but it's not. It's the opposite. It is hilarious. <laughs> yes. After Beth dumps him, he decides that he will try to win her heart again by skiing the K-12, the biggest, most dangerous mountain in their area. He has the support of his friends, Charles Demar, and then this girl next door, who is a foreign exchange student named Monique, and they try to help Lane build his confidence back so he could ski the K-12 and, in his mind, hopefully win back the heart of Beth. I don't even recall if she has the last name, honestly. Beth. It's Beth. Yeah. Beth from Nightmare on Elm Street. But um, mm -hmm. they've been in a relationship that we gather for six months, and he is at a very unhealthy, obsessive level. It it, it would be stalkerish if he wasn't so lovable. Yeah. <laughs> you know? He's the most likable stalker. The suicidal stalker. Suicidal stalker that you know? we know. But so you, you the scene opens up and you just see his wall plaster with every picture of her. You see how far his obsession goes and he means it in a genuine way. He truly loves Beth. Yes, he does. But even though we don't see much of their relationship during the good times, you kind of get the feeling feeling that she's a little bit embarrassed by him. Yeah. At least that's the feeling I got. Yeah, unless he, he was just, you know there until she found someone better, which he she did. He was just a sweet boy. Yeah, you know, he's a sweet boy, but yeah, no, he's the nice, he's the nice guy. That you know? always gets walked upon. Yes. Yeah, so. But not the, I'm a nice guy kind of guy, right. but just a genuinely nice guy. Yeah, and then until she meets... Uh, Stalin. Stalin, yes. The, uh, you know, the stereotypical blonde bully oh, you've seen a lot in the 80s movies, but this guy is... Yeah, he's a jerk. <laughs> very punchable face. It's a very punchable face. Well, he's a very punchable... Clearly not in his high school teenage years, punchable. No, yeah. The 80s was really notorious. Or 70s too, like Reese. Ooh, these teenagers do not look like teenagers. He definitely looks like a 30-something. Well, I think you found out that um, John Cusack was actually in his early, like, 1920s, you know, 19 slash 20, not 1920s, when this film was made. And while people like Beth were well into their mid-20s. So right. I think he was the closest one to actually be yeah, the proper Yeah, actually be much older. Yeah, the proper <laughs> age, age group. And... Yeah, no, he's he's the yeah stereotypical blonde bully that you just want to punch in the face, and yeah, and I don't know what Beth sees in him. He's a really good skier. He skis the K twelve. The K twelve. He skis the K twelve lane. Yeah, that's that's all you really need to care about in a boyfriend is yeah, yeah. he can ski the K twelve. Yeah, and she, you know. But even okay, but even when she's with Stalin, there's moments that I feel like she's embarrassed by him too. It's yeah. like she she just she gravitates to whoever satisfies her at the moment, but she isn't truly satisfied she isn't truly happy in it because she's just trying to get something from she's trying to suck something out of them so like with with lane she's trying to make him cool by getting him to get the cool car and you know maybe he'll be in the ski team but then when he fails at the ski team he isn't doing his fancy car no. so you she, go we'll, on to the next one moving on to the next yeah and yeah so you know we've all been through that yes but that beth that uh, bad <laughs> but you know it's a good thing i recommend you watch bear off dead First, and then watch Nightmare on Elm Street, which she was in. She gets it. She dies a horrible death in Nightmare on Elm Street. So if you really hate her and bear off dead, watch Nightmare on Elm Street right after. And she, you'll feel much better. Charles, the best friend to have. He really is. The, he is the best friend that your parents don't want you to have, but every person needs as a best friend. Yes, and Charles is played by Curtis Armstrong, who is, a, if you don't know, Booger from Revenge of the Nerds. I've actually never seen that. She's never seen it, so... But yeah, so, you know, but he, this is his, in my opinion, his best character he's ever done. He's super supportive of his best friend. He's trying to stop him from committing suicide. It doesn't put him down for trying to commit suicide. No. He's not like, well, you're weak. You're a loser. He, he's like, no, buck up, little camper. Buck up, little camper. He's just the, yeah, he's the friend I he's, wish I had in high school. Even though, you know, he does drugs. He's been retained for how many years? Uh... A seven and a half? He's no dummy. He's no dummy, yes. But he, he truly is a super supportive. He's right there with his friend 
like at every, every step of the way. Yeah, he's helping with the training. He's helping him at the very end. And he's just an awesome best friend. I really thought Monique was adorable and sweet and cute in this movie. And it wasn't until the adult realized that she was one of the princesses from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Right. So I never get, I never heard her in with the, an American accent. She's no. either French or uh, in, you know, European. You so never... I was actually really sad to find out that she was American because yeah, she yeah. seems so cute. I still French. don't know what she sounds like. I still think she's French. Yeah. I mean, to me, she's Monique to me. Yeah, she'll always be Monique. Yeah. But when we first meet her, we aren't actually meeting her. We just see this girl with a suitcase plopping it down in this strange house. And we have no idea no, we... who she is. And we like, oh, she is cute. So you think like, oh, you know, she might, you know, obviously she's going to come into play somehow. But we don't know who she is or anything like that. But she turns out to be kind of like Charles you know, a very supportive person for, for Lane. And one thing I really love about her is while she, it, she admits her feelings and she does things to kind of, I don't want to say come on because that sounds creepy, but she yeah. does romantic gestures to Lane. Let's put it that way. Sounds right. better. Yeah. yeah. She, she's coming on to Lane. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but she does things and while he doesn't exactly reject her, he's not exactly just pushing off his other goals either, right. but she doesn't pressure him. Like yeah. she doesn't stop. She doesn't stop being his friend. She doesn't stop trying to help him build his his self worth back. And mm -hmm. I really like that about her. And that's a very that is a very healthy relationship for Lane to be in. And while he's doing that, he's dealing with all a slew of just really random characters. Right, random characters and random. situations. That's that's an understatement. Yeah. Really random. Very random. And you're you don't like, know what the director was smoking when he wrote some of these things. <laughs> no, but yeah, you do not want to encounter any of these characters in your life. Lane Meyer's parents are some of the strangest and yet normal parents you will see on film. Lane's mom who is trying so hard to just have a happy little household. Mm. You know, she's she's being a good housewife. Well, she's trying to be a good housewife. She's trying to make meals, you know, at home meals for her family. And she just is oblivious. Yeah. Blissfully but oblivious to everything. I will never have her cooking. Ever. No. No. Mm -mm. The no. the green bacon. The green bacon. The boiled. It's boiled. Oh, yeah, I the boiled, boiled it. bacon. I boiled it. And then, uh, so and then the, 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 yeah. there was like the this pot with like these like tentacles and little crab arms. Oh yeah, yeah, I love like, I love the animatronics of all... that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And and she does and she excuses all of the strange behavior of her children. So you know Lane is obsessing over Beth, and she's like, "It's fine, you know, it's okay." Oh, that's nice. And then um, Lane's brother Badger, who is this. He doesn't say a word in this yeah, movie. Yeah, hardly no. But he's this like you know mad scientist. scientist. But he's cutting out all the coupons from the cereal and cat food boxes without having the food gone. So it's just pouring out, and the mom just like, oh, he's just clipping out the coupons. What <laughs> you know, like it's and oblivious the, to what and he's doing. The the poor dad played by David Augenstyre. He was Cogsworth in Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> so it's hilarious to see him as a human. You feel so much sympathy for this poor dad. Yeah, I mean, he's just like any other dad. He's a normal dad. He's a normal dad, or you know, with a very strange family, <laughs> very strange wife who uh, has delicious, delicious cooking. Yes, and she makes him wear the strangest things, like the little aardvark Christmas hood and everything like that. Yeah. And and he's he's trying to understand his sons, both of them, because he's kind of worried about the younger son too. But he's really worried about Lane, and he's just. But he goes through, he just goes with it with grace and dignity, you know, all this strange stuff. So even his wife's cooking, he's just like, okay, he just yeah. suffers silently yeah, yeah. in this movie. Mm -hmm. and, it's like he's dying inside. Yes, but he's trying, he still loves his wife, you know, like he puts his arms around her and, you know, yeah. he calls her honey and sweet and he, he doesn't shame her for her own eccentricities. Yeah. But you could just, yeah, see inside, he's just like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> and it's, he is such a delight. How, how will we explain Ricky? Oh Ricky God. is like, he's a nerd, but he's also a dick. And he thinks he's cool. He thinks he's cool. I mean, you know, it's the type of movie that might inspire a nerd to become cool. Or just be yourself. I mean, he, he never feels worried about being judged by others. He wears kind of absurd outfits. Yes. And he's snorting his nasal spray and his, you know. Yeah. And, you know, and getting, you know, dance on the dance floor. Oh, God, that, that dance scene. Oh, yeah. He's just like. 
<laughs> and then he's on the floor. Oh yeah, and, and everyone just continues to dance. As if all he wasn't the... there. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, he's like the coolest nerd yet. But he's and he's very yeah. You said it. He is a dick. He's he... very controlling of poor Monique. Yeah, yeah. and and has a very uh, talk about unhealthy relationships. He has a very unhealthy relationship with his mother. I they actually are characters. I actually I love the 1960s, and so I kind of adore. Most of Ricky's mom's outfits in this movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she kind of looks like a John Waters character brought over to a John Hughes movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing against you, honey. But when I was younger, I actually kind of wanted to date Lane Meyer. Not because he was obsessive or his suicidal tendencies. It wasn't anything about that. It's because he has a genuine sweetness in this movie that you don't see in a whole bunch of movies, especially about teens. You know, they're usually like they're just out to get laid or they're out doing drugs. They usually have like some negative motive for their arc. Mm. But... He was just genuinely a sweet guy. And, he just wanted love. He wanted love, and he is very romantic. And he he's caring, he's funny, he's, he is talented with his, his his cartooning and then his skiing ability. But I would just I always saw him as lovable and sympathetic. And yeah, I always just kind of was like, if I could have a you know teenage boyfriend, I would have had Lane Meyer. He's really one of the best well-rounded teenage characters i've actually seen in quite a few movies well, what i like about him he's not like he's not a geek you no. know he's not the alcat and he's not you know he's not the popular kid no he's somewhere in the middle and i think that's why i relate to he's him just so surviving high school because there's we not every school has a click it's not like oh you hang out with the cheerleaders you hang out with the geeks you are a total loser some of us we just survived high school my favorite scene for me in this movie is actually the most relatable for me and it's when uh, Lane Meyer and some other kids are in a math class and the teacher is going on with this long math babble and everyone else is so engrossed in what the teacher's saying and you kind of see Lane and he's just looking yeah, it's a very... kind of lost. And then the teacher asks them to grab their homework from the previous night and everyone else has these elaborate folders, this like this desktop tele typewriter kind of thing. And then there's poor Lane. He pulls out this piece of paper from his back pocket and he pulls it open with gum in it. It's like, oh, homework last night. And to me, that was just the most relatable scene because math is definitely not my strong point. Most and, relatable, but yet most unrealistic. Because... Well, that's unrealistic because of all the items that the other kids have and their engrossment in what the teacher's saying. Yeah, that would never happen. No, Ever. but but I just felt like I was always like Lane because everyone else seemed to get what the teacher was talking about. And I felt like Lane because I'm like, I don't understand a word of what the teacher's saying right now. But I think what it is is that it's extreme of what, yeah, yeah, while it's unrealistic, it's, it's the, still it's the emotional response to it, it that's extreme. I mean, in our mind, it's probably like everyone knows what the teacher's talking about. Yeah. But we're like, <laughs> What the hell? Yeah, so what is your favorite scene in this movie? It's the uh, the dance party, or yeah, the high school dance. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It, it just, it, it's an epitome of every 80s dance scene. I mean, everyone's doing that. I mean, that's in every 80s movie. Footloose. Yeah. You, just, you just cut in any song, any yeah, song. Yeah, and it'll and just blend, it'll just, it. yeah, it'll just sink in perfectly. What really elevates the scene is when Ricky comes in. Oh god, yeah. yeah. And, and the doors just, just go and the smoke. And the smoke comes out <laughs> and then yeah, and then he's dragging trying poor Monique to oh, dance with him. And, and he even picks her up and like throws yeah, her. Yeah, throws her around. Her around. And I've seen that. I've seen people dance like that. Oh dance thank like, god you just, don't dance with me like that. Yeah, I don't know, no. But um yeah, no, he I've seen that happen, I'm like feeling bad for it. So you just really feel bad for Monique in the situation. But then he just pulls but her away. Ricky's in his moment. He's in though. his moment and then everyone's just like cheering for him. Like, yeah, go Ricky. Do they even know who Ricky is? I don't think they have any I I, I didn't know at first I didn't know he went to the same school. Because I thought he was homeschooled. Yeah, I thought he was homeschooled, but yeah, with his mother. <laughs> but yeah, so when he just starts hey, Ricky. Yeah, Ricky. 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 And uh, yeah, and then yeah, he just starts dancing and, he's and then he's doing like and right there, it's like, oh man, he's 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 in into it. He's cool. He's cool. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, and then he just falls flat. He just passes out. Passes out. Yeah, and everyone just continues. too much excellence. <laughs> too much excellence. I think my favorite suicide attempt would have to be when he, you know, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna jump off the bridge. Oh god, yes. And then his and then his friend Charles comes by in a bike and, and he's trying to give him a give him encouragement. And he just pass in the back and then he just ends up falling <laughs> into the garbage truck. Yes. And then one he of the just sits there accepting his fate. He yes, just... yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's one of my favorite suicide attempts. I know, a favorite suicide attempt. What is your favorite suicide attempt, sweetie? <laughs> that one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta say, though, my favorite suicide attempt 
is uh, it sounds so dark when we I know, say this, but it's it's so funny. <laughs> um, is his first one when he's trying to hang himself? Yes, and, and he, he's in the garage, and it's God, it sounds terrible. He has the rope around his neck, and I, it seems like he has a moment of hesitance that he's really not sure if he's going to do it, but then. His mom opens up the door, which knocks him off his and chair. And she's vacuuming. And she's vacuuming. She's holding that door closed, and he's like, uh, 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 and choking. I mean, she just has, she's oblivious to a lot of things in this movie. She's vacuuming and everything. Mm -hmm. that. So, yeah, it's, it, the, this, it's not the deaths that are funny, or the deaths, or the attempted deaths that are funny. It's the situation that goes around them and his failure to achieve this death. But that's what I love about this movie. It's just ridiculous. It, it's a very realistic film. But it has these little things thrown in there that make it a fantasy. And yeah. that's one of the best things. So like Ferris Bueller is a fantasy, you know, that you it'd be nearly impossible to have such a perfect day. But this one's a fantasy and some of these instances that you knew you know couldn't happen in the real world, but you felt like it did happen in your life. It's like a it's like a John Hughes film, not directed by John Hughes. It's the best non John Hughes it's the best John Hughes film not directed by John Hughes. On acid. But I love it that it, it is a message for teenagers without being so heavy-handed. So you, you get the lesson without feeling like you've been bombarded, bombarded yeah. with the lesson. Not heavy-handed whatsoever. No, you don't feel it. And no. so, I mean, he's trying to commit suicide. You're honestly laughing at it, you know. And you yeah. know, like, I shouldn't be laughing. This kid's trying to kill himself. But yeah. that's funny. Over, over <laughs> a girl. Over, for you know, over Beth. Yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah, so that's not worth it. Not worth it, dude. But, not worth it. But it, you know, it's a great story to overcome your own Beths, to yes. overcome yes. your so, own K twelves, to overcome, to overcome your own issues. And I just, I really think that this movie has a lot of lessons and a lot of inspiration for for teenagers and anyone going through a breakup, going through a little bit of a depression, you know. And it's, I just, I'm so amazed that. When people talk about their top 80s movies, this is not at least part of the top five. No, they this say is not. Pretty in Pink. Well, it's like Breakfast Club. Well, it's like I reckon, you know, people will be like, "Oh, what's a good, you know, you know, I like Breakfast Club. I like, you know, Pretty in Pink." But I so well, have you seen Better Off Dead? They're like, I never heard of that. I know. And it surprises me. And then when I they they, go, they watch it and they come back, they go, "That was great." And Better Off Dead is probably one of the best teen comedies, 80s yes. teen comedies I've ever seen. Yes, and with one of the best morals. And best growth stories I, I've ever seen. Yes. Yeah. Morals. Mm -hmm. Like morals. You like morals. <laughs> we get better off dead five milkshakes out of five. If you like what you saw, like and subscribe and follow us on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> Christmas. <laughs>